Welcome to the Hell Fucking Yeah podcast. Niall Marr, everyone, hailing from the wonderful United Kingdom. <laughs> yeah. How the fuck well, are you, man? I'm all right. I'm all right. Yeah, you know, pleasure, pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for coming here, man. I really appreciate it. Um, so where are you exactly? If I'm not mistaken, Manchester, right? Yeah, so I'm in Manchester. I've just taken a break from uh, putting, putting some guitars down. So I've just snuck upstairs because um, we're just mid making another record. So we're coming close. Sweet, man. I, I'm, I can't wait for that. We're going to get into that a little bit later. Uh, um, so how's life over there in the UK? It's all, it's all right. We, you know, I think like, uh, 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 like no one's having fun. You know, um, so we're just ticking away. It's like Manchester, unfortunately, we, we've got some of the highest coronavirus case rates in, mm. uh, in the country. Um, so it doesn't really feel like you can be yourself and be responsible, you know, right. so you kind of having to make sacrifices. But it's people are getting on with it. You know, I mean, it's yeah. bad. It's bad for Europe, but it doesn't appear to be uh, nearly as bad as how you guys have got going. But yeah. if you're out on the street, it feels normal here. You know, just we can't do, we can't like see gigs or play, you know. But beyond yeah. That, yeah. Now, do you have the same thing going on like we have here with the masks and this, the social distancing, six feet and all that? Yeah, people, people are sort of more inclined to wear masks here, I think, because we're we don't have this idea that we're allowed to do whatever we want <laughs> because people shouldn't tell us otherwise, you know, right. we're a majority of people completely reasonable. Everyone's fine. Like I personally, I'm kind of into just covering up everywhere now in public. I'm like, this, right. is, this suits me. So you is know? it required? Um, I think so. But in England, no one will ever, um, like no one's going to pull you up for not doing it. The most you'll get is when people like, when you leave people like shake their head and tut aggressively, you know, cause we're English. We don't want to make a fuss. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. You just be passive aggressive. Right. <laughs> when you leave. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, the U S over here, we really can't get our shit together. I mean, yeah. like, like, I, you know, I do what I have to do. Um, but you know, this place is a mess, man. <laughs> it's, so, it's I, you know what? I really, before we get into the music and everything, I need an outside look. How yeah. crazy do we, do we look over here? <laughs> oh, it's a real shame. Be honest. Because I love Americans yeah. and America. I'm like, this has not been your finest hour. No. I mean, no. on a serious note, I think the majority of, uh, I think it's concern. The rest of the world are looking on with concern. We're not laughing anymore. No one finds it funny because when America is this much of a mess, I think what Ameri America, I find, you know, bear in mind, like uh, I've lived in America. Uh, my wife is American. You know, we, I, I'm down, I'm down with the struggle. But yeah. <laughs> um, it's America doesn't like being compared to anywhere in the rest of the world. And I think in some parts it would be really helpful if you, if you, you know, we're like, okay, with drawing comparisons. But then the mm. problem that we have, I think, is that where Americans are right to feel as self-important, when America does something, the rest of the world just follows. Mm. So if America's like backsliding, the rest of the world is taking their foot off the gas. And one of the things that I will say is, like, America, like any country, I mean, you know, if you want to talk pretty shady legacies, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, but like, I feel like America cops to mistakes eventually might take a while, Yeah, but you'll, you're always trying to do better, which I think is the really, really inspiring and endearing quality in America. And I'm very ready to see that again. You know, yeah. we, we Me too. need it. Me too. Yeah. I couldn't agree more, man. Uh, you know, and everyone out there in the UK or any, anywhere else in the world listening to this, uh, we're not all crazy, you know? No, and <laughs> some, everyone There's some that. good ones here, man. I swear, yeah. I swear to it. <laughs> you know, just look at like, just go into a really fancy American health food store and you're like, yeah, things, are, things can be good here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
We uh, actually, I've been to London. Um, my wife and I, we, we, we kind of made a mistake though. <laughs> yeah. We went, just, um, you went to London. No, no. We wanted to go. We were, we were, we were stoked to go. Uh, but we went during the summer of 2012. Uh, oh, the Olympics. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it was one of those things where like I planned it months in advance and didn't even, wasn't even on my radar, you know? And yeah. then I was like a few weeks before I'm like, Oh shit, the Olympics are going on. And yeah. I mean, it was it was crazy <laughs> it was so uh chaotic you know it was just packed yeah. it was packed it, it rained every day <laughs> yeah because it's the um summer. but to be honest with you we loved it we really did yeah. our only regret we we went out to um we did a very touristy tour kind of thing we went out to stonehenge yeah and like the roman bathhouse in, in bath yep and we were like you know that was a one-day trip we were like why didn't we stay out in the country and kind of visit London for a day or two because it was essentially like we were, I'm in New York. So it was yeah. essentially like we went to, from New York to New York. <laughs> it was yeah. like very busy, you know, a lot of workers and, um, and things like that. But it, it was I, I, great, underst man. I understand you've come, it's a long way. It's a like trip of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. You have to do it. Like mm -hmm. you've got to tick those boxes. Um, I'm always, I always try and the next time go of, the north because that's where like the real people are that's where like real things happen yeah. stonehenge though i have beef with stonehenge yeah <laughs> because whenever we're touring that part of the country we're always like let's go let's stop off get in and because no one i think is allowed to claim ownership and i know they're like yeah it's national heritage site and i'm like totally fine for a paid entry museum or anything like that but i'm like I am not paying to look at a national monument that's outside. Right. You know, cause, right. cause I'm like, unless you're an OG Druid, you don't get to tell me I have to pay to look at it. And so every time we've broken in and it used to be really easy to break into Stonehenge. And over the years they have bumped up security. Cause initially I was like, who's going to stop me? Like the British heritage police, they're going to be like in suits of armor. It's going to be ridiculous. But like the last, time i broke in they got really heavy-handed you know they they were like aggro and i'm like calm down really? they're trying to like block you from seeing these giant you know they're like yeah, pushing right, right. you and trying to <laughs> stop you looking at it it's like dude they're huge monoliths like right i can see them <laughs> yeah yeah you can see them from miles away yeah uh, so i'm on like four my fourth break in to stonehenge well, now, so. <laughs> Well, we, you know, listen, we were, we were visitors, so we did, the, we did the right thing. We paid to get in yeah. and, uh, our experience was pretty crazy because it was light, a lightning storm. Oh, I mean, I mean it was straight pouring, like yeah. to the point where we really couldn't even see or take like decent pictures. Um, and there we are with our like fucking umbrellas, just holding them up as close to the lightning as possible. Like, like in a field we're these giant fucking rocks we're, we're willing to die for them you know um yeah. but it was it was cool regardless um yeah yeah it was it was a good time we you know by the end of the trip we we, we stayed in um what was the we were in like central london we were like you know spitalfields market yeah we were like right around the corner from there right and on the last day we actually found that um when we were totally broke and ready to go home, I was like, Oh my God, I wish we found this, you know, <laughs> yeah. last week. Uh, yeah. I would have, we would have spent all our money there. They had such cool, like ships, like a, like a flea market kind of thing. It was really cool. Um, but yeah, good times. Good times. <laughs> yeah. Next time we'll get you up North. It'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. I, if I do ever come back, I want to, um, definitely want to stay out in the countryside or, or something. It's beautiful, beautiful place, yeah. you know? So, now, how did you, we were talking about Christopher a little bit before we, we started. How did you meet him? Uh, so, you know what, man? We've still not met face to face. No way. <laughs> total well, internet, same here, really. <laughs> it's like total internet buds. Um, we got a lot of the same. I, I was a fan. You know that mm -hmm. last album that he made, Failure yeah. Sculpture? Love it, man, yes. That thing came out like, that came out of nowhere. Yeah. And, all of a sudden I was just like, I, I was so blown away that this guy who'd sort of been on my radar just came out with my favorite record. 
And, <laughs> and, you know, and then I was like, man, we have so many of the same friends um, from Pacific Northwest. I was like, right. how have our paths not crossed? And you know what it was? I, I asked him a question about a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, straight away. Yeah. like best buds and i was like there you go man you know yeah he's he's like that man so you know and then i even yeah really cool like, really amazing guy man i um yeah i've been a fan since day one of him um he uh cool. failure sculptures is uh, have you heard by any chance his uh new ep that he, it's not released yet but he sent me he sent me wow stuff. wow it's great yeah and me and him i think <laughs> me and him keep threatening to, to make music together. I think <laughs> we, I was, I was supposed to be in the States um, this year and we were, we were going to do stuff, but I think it's just going to be a, whenever we're back, you know, I know, I know when, whenever we get back to normal, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, let's get into the music a little bit. Cool. Um, so you started in a band called man made. Yeah. Uh, a few singles in 2015 and an album in 2016 TV broke my brain. Yeah. Um, now you moved, you lived in Portland for a little while, if I'm not mistaken, right? Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Okay. Did, I'm trying to figure out the timeline. Did you make the, did you, the bands form in Portland or Manchester? No. So basically I was Portland when I was a teen. So I was like teenager. Um, and then kind of moved, we were like fully moved back by 2010 ish, something like that. And then okay. I, um, then I went back, uh, to live in, in the States, I think 2000 and like 2012, cause I was in a band and we made a record with, um, John Goodmanson, uh, in Seattle who did all the, like he did, uh, some, I think he might have recorded some Lily stuff or like, I know his wife was in the Lilies for a while, a okay. New York band. And then. He's done a lot. He did a lot of the Sleater Kinney records and stuff. So oh, I was wow. in this like this band from Leeds, and then I moved. I was living in San Francisco for a bit, so I was like back in the states. And then when I'd kind of gotten, and then I joined an American band briefly. Did, um, really? <laughs> yeah, because I was like I basically quit this Leeds band and then called up my friend who I'd played with before. Uh, she's a East coast and i was like hey do you want to be in a band she was like yeah do you, where do you want to meet in la uh and it was great because it was just like me and her learning to write songs together and she's she was like a crystal healer at the time and we were getting <laughs> up at like five in the morning every day doing yoga right like playing a bit and then we'd walk we didn't have a car or any money and we'd like walk to whole foods and just like look at smoothies and then go home <laughs> and then we were in bed by like six every day it was great and then I kind of would, I, we toured, um, we toured the States with that. We did like a bit of touring and she had a pink Cadillac. I was like, that is a great touring vehicle. Oh, uh, absolutely. I think she borrowed it from someone. And then I was <laughs> like, okay, back in the UK, I uh, got a UK band together and we did like, I wrote TV broke my brain. And then we just, we just toured. That was it. Yeah. Like we toured so much. Yeah. yeah just just in the uk just get just did the get in the van and do it right so that was like i'm back in the uk yeah. project you know gotcha now so what happened to the band after the uh you know first release in the tour well basically we um the band because well, we were three piece and it was me um a bass player callum who i lived with um you know and he's like always in the van and then uh, we had this drummer who basically we, we just kind of gotten burnt out touring, um, you know, cause it's tough doing that like van sleeping on the floors, oh, yeah. which we still do, you know, we still do, but it's, we hadn't taken a break, you know, for years and we were just, we just playing everywhere. I mean, cause I, I approached the UK with like a sense of American scale. So I'll be like 13 hour drive, no problem. Yeah. You know, and that gets you pretty far here, you know? Oh yeah, absolutely. And so we would just go around and I do all the driving cause I don't drink. So I'm like yeah. ready to go. And it, we just got burnt out. And then I played, um, I got a call to play, um, 
for Hans Zimmer, you know, to do that tour. Yeah, you're, that's one of my questions, yeah. So we basically, it was a perfect time because we were about to make, we were about to go in and make a new record and the, we'd gone, we'd changed drummers like a couple of times, but not found like the right dude. And then I got the call from Hans. So it was like, oh, let me just take, you know, basically a year off. Right. Um, and move back to the States. And then like we toured nine months, I think, out of that year. Wow. And then um, and then when I came back, I was like, we've got a new drummer. It's still me and Cal, the bass player. Like I I'm still writing the songs, but it just felt when there's when there's only three of you and you change something like, as big as the drummer and you've mm -hmm. taken that much time off. It feels like you can you can change the name, even though I feel like people will just think you hear the same guy singing, you hear the same kind of guitar. It, it'll still sound like the same band, but we were just like, let's shelve that project. Cause sure. we're all, cause we're all a bit older and we feel sure, like. Sure. So know. it's more mutual, you know? Oh yeah. 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 yeah I mean, it's yeah. still, it's still just, I still, I'm still writing the songs. You know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so actually let's get into that. Uh, Hans Zimmer. Um, yeah. You want to tell us about that experience a bit? I mean, that's, that must've been pretty wild. Yeah. That was a trip. Cause like, yeah. you know, who's not a fan. He's done so much good stuff. It's like it's insane. Yeah. The movies. And, yeah. Yeah. So I, I got called to, to be in this like giant band that he was putting together, you know, and it, at its core, it's like a rock band, but if you just had like infinite resources to throw at it, you know? Right. And, um, and so I, I had to like learn all these, all these scores um, and I, I can't read music or um, and I, I'd never tr like I, I knew I could play guitar like how I play well I, I wasn't sure if I could speak that language with everyone because it's it seems really daunting when you first look at it you know especially coming from like indie world and um, you have to turn up to rehearsals with all these people you've never met and be shit hot and I was like the youngest in the band <laughs> by a country mile yeah <laughs> and so I turned up and you could tell everyone's like nervous and trying to suss right. their own. Everyone is as worried as everyone, which was kind of reassuring. And yeah. we were just, we rehearsed for like three weeks as the band, um, you know, after having all your stuff down and like learning how we're going to do it, you know, um, in LA. And then, which was the first time I'd ever seen an orchestra and the first time I'd ever played a gig to people sat down and it's like three and a half thousand people. And I was just like, wow, it was such sensory <laughs> overload. And that yeah. was the warm up show. Cause the next day we did Coachella. We were one of the headlines oh, wow. of Coachella. Wow. So it was really thrown in at the deep end. Yeah. But no, that's it, crazy. It was funny. Cause like in that band, everyone's so different, but they bring, together we we bring like a really interesting thing to to each other's playing because everyone you know everyone no one steps on each other's toes because we're all we're yeah. all bringing some and um before that tour like the coachella one this is where i bring to the party like coming from indie world no one had done festivals before you mm. know and they were talking about doing the festival set and hans has told this story a few times i think to people but like it does make me laugh. Um, they were, we, we just finished the last practice before Coachella and they were doing the set list and, you know, cause you have to tell the orchestra and all sorts. And this is a big, you know, bringing an orchestra to the desert. This is a dumb idea. No one knew it was going <laughs> to, everyone thought it, like it was going to be a disaster and cause it had never been done. And um, like when each song is like 16 minutes, practices feel long because you can't just go let's just run that one more time <laughs> it's like right it's a slog and um so everyone was wanting to go home and they were picking the set and it had been decided and then they were like any questions you know and everyone just wants to go we're all super tired nervous and i was like oh. like <laughs> the kid in the corner like put his hand up and i was just like i think that set list is totally wrong <laughs> and everyone and this is why Hans is amazing to his credit he was like right present idea you know and I was like explained about wow. warp up 
and you know and i'm like you have to play this into this into this and this is the audience and like trust me wow you know and so we went out and it was fucking brilliant you know it was it was one of the coolest things i've done and and it really worked you know because i was like gladiator into lion king <laughs> into the caribbean you know i'm like they start with inception the like fog horns like that's like, amazing I'll come man out and do my thing and but it that was my like intro to that <laughs> yeah no you became like director right there you know oh god it was such a mistake that's awesome <laughs> um so would you say uh you learned a lot musically during that awesome. tour like yeah, yeah like yeah like just being part of being inside that music um and that's why I, I like, you know, we did nine months of touring, um, you know, and it was great. And playing to venues that are, you know, huge sports stadiums. And, and then I went back, like moved, and then me and my wife moved back to England. And we were right. like, let's like build a studio, start a band and, uh, you know, like, and then be an English band for a bit. And I went from like stadium energy, bringing that, to let's do the club you know and i that's right. the, that's the best bit is not many people get to do both you know yeah no that's that's a very good point so what do you prefer you prefer the the arena or like the more intimate setting totally depends like what's funny about the hands gigs is because it's so the music is so emotional but every gig without fail we have like people crying you know, near the front and you can see them dotted wow. around and they don't always cry in the same bits, you know, and that's, and during that tour, I'm sure everyone of us in the band, we like were in tears on stage at some points because it's, it's pretty incredible because even though there's so many of us playing such a, a big score, there's still space. And when the, you know, we played some beautiful outdoor gigs, you know, and you're like, in those space and so it can be quite emotional um and then whereas when you play like indie music in a club there is no space and you are on top of each <laughs> other and your amps fill the room you right, know like you don't right. need mics necessarily in most of these places it's like you're filling the room so there's kind of no space to have that emotional um moment because right that space is filled up by your energy because you're mm -hmm. getting that from people there. Right. So well, wow, that's really interesting. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's all to do with space. So it's almost like the opposite. It's almost like the, these bigger things, you're more, more emotion from it. Yeah. And you, I yeah. would think personally, I would think, you know, a smaller thing would be, wow, that's very interesting. I never thought of it that way. I think it's just from on stage. I th and I think it's just a case of like headroom. Sure. You know? Sure. Something like that. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, so now as a solo artist, uh, would you say your approach to songwriting greatly differs from being in a band and which do you prefer creatively? Um, the way I've always written songs is like, it's not a democracy, mm. <laughs> you know, I'm like, and, and I'm pretty upfront about it. Yeah. That, nothing wrong <laughs> with know, that. Like it all depends. Like it depends on the band, you know, right. it, but, um, cause I, I've been in bands where it's like, good fun and a lot of you are chiming in and it's great but um i think when it's your band regardless of you know if it's under your own name or like man made it my approach to songwriting is always i want to make tunes that i like and it, sure. for me that's like i love melodies so mm -hmm. i like that i'm just like as many melodies as possible and so you're always in the back of your mind, you got your references running of like shit you like, you know, and then I'm basically just constantly trying to do an impression of like four or five things that I heard when I was a teenager that sure. went in so deep and I've spent years just trying to do that impression and it comes out slightly different every time. <laughs> you know? But it, I don't know which I'd prefer, like, there's no matter of like preferring because I think when you can write the music and, and sing and do the words, you're so fully contained, Yeah. which might not, it definitely isn't always a good thing, you know, that you have, you're so insular, but you at least can 
finish stuff really quick. Gotcha. That's very interesting. Um, so as far as US releases, uh, um, there's a few singles, you know, um, three song EP, Still Hearts. Yep. Um, so first off, I think I speak for everyone. We want more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And when can we expect a full length? So when, when's, this, when's this podcast coming out? I'm going to edit it tonight yep. and put it out pretty much tonight. <laughs> Unless you want me to wait. I can. No, no, no. You know what? Yeah. Uh, so I can't tell you when the full length's coming out, but I can tell you at the end of the month, there will be a full announcement on like the record. Because to be honest, we've, been, we've had a record that has been finished for a long time. Um, and that's what I'm saying. I, we're recording the next record right now. Wow. Um, and it was basically with, when everything shut down with coronavirus, it, we were like, we cannot just keep pushing this further and further down the mm -hmm. road because it's going to feel completely irrelevant. Um, yeah. You know, be, and that's just from a selfish point of view where I was like, I am going to, who knows when we can start touring mm -hmm. again. And I'm like, I can't get up and tour like this is fresh. So I'm, I was just like, you know what? Let's just start putting music out. No one can play shows. It doesn't matter. Let's just put music out for people because I want to feel like I'm doing something. So we had that record sitting. So, you know. Absolutely. So new single should be out um, end of this month and we'll have the full album announcement. You know. That's really exciting. I can't wait, yeah. honestly, man. Um, any plans on, I mean, obviously touring's out of the question at the moment. Um, any plans on like a virtual concert? Uh, you know what? I'm not going to say no. It, it's a funny one. Cause I did a few like online streams, um, early days and I don't know. I feel like you're asking a lot of people to look at their phone for long periods of time, especially when all that everyone's doing all day is on their phone. Right. And so I was always a little hesitant to do that again for people. But um, I don't know. I want the production value to be good, mm. you know, because yeah. there's, there's putting out content for the sake of putting out content, which also has value, you know, because some people really want that. Um, I don't necessarily think... I want to just put out stuff for the sake of it. I'm just like, let's, if I'm going to do a, like a live gig, it'll be good. <laughs> you yeah. Know? yeah. You know, and, and then I'll only do one of them, but we were supposed right. to, man, we, we were looking at touring um, the States in December, you know, and where I was just like, I'll just come over myself and we'll play uh, really limited, you know, to super small crowds and I'll just do acoustic. Um, oh, wow. That'd be, that'd be, I love that. I, I love it and, yeah. and I, I love doing that but um, America and the UK haven't got their shit together so no <laughs> so we, you know yeah but no I know I know that'll happen yeah and there's other parts of the world that are like you know they took this real serious and they were like all right what, let's see what we got to do and like they can go to the movies and like do shit <laughs> you know it's um devastating devastating yeah yeah it's i feel like it's just prolonging things here um it is what it is i miss concerts man i had some shows lined up this year and they all got postponed uh hopefully till next year so <laughs> yeah I don't know. we'll find out but there's stuff i'm ready like i'm ready to do stuff that's why we're making a record because i'm like well if if we're back to normal in 2021 mm -hmm. there'll be more stuff you know and this will just be absolutely something that tidied everyone over, you know, but right. there's no shortage of songs. That's awesome. That's awesome. So where can everyone uh, get your vinyl? I mean, I know you had a lot of stuff sold out, but still hard to yeah, so, still up. I think there's 10 left. Ten. As of right. Wow. Go get them. Yeah. yeah. Go get them. So <laughs> we do like, yeah, it's cause you, when you self releasing, man, just limited runs. So when, when the record comes out, you'll be able to buy it directly from me via Bandcamp because mm -hmm. I love that DIY thing. And Absolutely. I think people really like knowing they're actually supporting an artist. 
I just think that's the way things, that's where things are going. That's where things have to go really. Yeah. In this day and age. Yeah. That's essentially what I'm trying to do here is like, I'm trying to do something I really love to do and, and support, you know, artists that I love. And it's, it's just, it's amazing. Yeah. So if, if anything, anything good came out of this whole <laughs> shutdown and all this stuff, it's definitely this. Yeah. And people want to feel like they're part of, that's the one thing I've learned with engaging with people on like Instagram, mm -hmm. you know, they, your supporters, you're actively being a fan, you know? Exactly. Right. Right. And because Spotify, you streaming their, their song on Spotify does not feel like you're a fan. You don't feel like you're a right. fan. There's, you know? there's a missing connection piece there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That was kind of like, so way back in the day, uh, we're talking like when Fences first came out with his EP. Um, yeah. Before the self-titled debut, you know, I ordered that directly from him, uh, the EP, and I still have it to this day. And he's like, his mind's blown that I even have nice. it. He's like, I, he's like, I made 50 of those. I'm like, that's how I've always been. You know, yeah. I like, I love that connection, you know. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's great. And to, to hear that from, from someone like you is really cool too. So, so uh, yeah, the world's fucked right now. But yeah. Um, yeah. as far as touring, uh, will you be hitting the U.S. if you can next year? Don't realize how expensive it is. Um, for like English bands particularly to come over, um, you know, because like, unless you get a grant to do something like South by Southwest and we right. have like a few, um, there's a few things like that where they will waive visas and you can get temporary permits to come over. Like the visas alone for a full band, you're looking at like $10,000. Wow. Just to start. Wow yeah and That's then insane. flights you know like why can, <laughs> I don't know. and like we can tour because i because i've been in an american band like, once we're there we can tour <laughs> and i love driving you know i love yeah. driving being english driving across america is great you know? yeah yeah it is you know it's, so yeah once we're there we can tour and we can just keep going round. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's the getting there. So we will definitely get there if it means I come on my own for the first bit. Um, we'll do that, you know. But I think next year, if we, if touring's back on, we have to we have to tour the state. Yeah, I think you're gonna be stoked to fucking get out and, and get on the road. Yeah. <laughs> I'll you take hold up for all this time. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you can, first of all, let me know if you're ever in uh, my area over here. I'm in New York, Long Island, New York. Of course. Um, and I'll be there. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, so who would you say is your biggest influences from, you know, back in the day, even to now, uh, as far as, you know, your creative process? And I think, you know what, it's probably still, it's probably still the same. Like, I mean, obviously every now and again, you hear tracks where you're just like, man, I, yeah. I want to do something like that. That's super cool. You know? Right. Um, but like the core foundations, I remember okay. Elliot Smith was <laughs> so important. Yeah. Just, just because like I was a, I was a kid and I like, like, I like punk rock. I like shouty, you know, I like in your face guitars. Um, but cause I like singing and like, I'll do it, you know, um, just to make sure I can get out and do it. But um, seeing someone go from punk rock in like Heat Miser to be like, no, I like singing these pretty songs in a not shouty macho rock way, because that is not me either. I was just like, whoa, you're allowed to do this? This is yeah. fucking great. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, and so that was, that like gave me permission to like, to be like a sort of indie pop singer you know because that's what i like and then it and then it was like fugazi just fucking blew my mind you mm -hmm. know as a teenager because in england fugazi are not part of your like musical teen education right so this was all when we were in the states and it was like all the dc stuff and then all that like olympia 
90s scene i yeah. suddenly got to like have access to like, and broken social scene broken social scene is oh, one yeah. where that that's a band that i've been trying to do a one man impression of broken <laughs> social scene <laughs> my entire life and um like i'll keep going back to do that you know so those guys but then like hot snakes rhythm guitar it's just an entire band of rhythm guitar i right. love it like they're the you know so so for those who don't know niall is the son of johnny marr of the smiths now i struggled with this whole thing because i'm interviewing you niall you know so not your father so i feel it's important to separate the two since you're an incredibly talented singer songwriter on your own merit so instead of asking questions i actually just want to offer a few con words if that's cool um, yeah, yeah, yeah you know as far for johnny uh thank you for all the beautiful music you've made and for you thank you for keeping it keeping it alive and keeping it going man thank you nice one thanks <laughs> i like to wrap it up with some fun questions so if that's cool yeah. with you and then i'll leave you the fuck alone yeah, man. so favorite rap album oh i mean <laughs> I know these will put you on the spot questions. I know. <laughs> I mean, like, are we counting Beastie Boys as rap? I can I have the book right here. Um, you no, know, I don't think so because they, 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 they just span everything, you know? Yeah, I know. That doesn't count, does it? This yeah. is the problem. Like, I've got some friends that at least have, like, definitely have like rap and hip hop education as part of their like upbringing, you know, because of friends that they've had. I have been pure in like indie rock <laughs> my entire yeah. life. You yeah. Know? So I don't know, like, well, if uh, that's the case, then yes, Beastie Boys definitely count. <laughs> yeah. This is where it's like, that was the most cop out guy doesn't know a thing about <laughs> rap music. No, no, sure. not at all. Not at all. But you know, like I'm trying to think, man, the, some of the stuff, like some of my friends, the stuff I've heard that have played me where you're just like, damn, that's super cool. Like, um, before, it seems like ages ago now, but we were, I was going to go see Moss Def the last time. I love Moss Def. I know, man. And he was like, he's playing the UK for the last time. Yeah. And that would have been fucking cool. Cause I've never seen, I've never seen like a rap or hip hop show. Yeah. I was like, I bet that would be cool. But, no nah, man, I, I can't, I can't, I can't give it, I can't give a real answer. I remember, it's all right. I'd been a little kid and hearing Eminem on like the way to school on the radio, I was like, this is wild. Yeah. And I don't know yeah. whether, I don't know whether the radio ever have can have that kind of thing again. I think we we just maybe have moved past that ability. Absolutely. But that was pretty fucking. You know? Yeah, it's uh, iconic. You know, it's uh, unmistakable. Yeah. You know who it is. Uh, so yeah. let's let's go on to the next one then. Favorite indie movie. Favorite indie movie. Oh man, I mean, like. Or or even favorite indie movie director or, or anything. Yeah, you know what? Favorite indie movie. I think um, it's a uh, drugstore cowboy. Oh, oh Gus Van Sant. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The Portland. Yeah. Yes, uh, Matt Matt Dillon. Like, yeah. Oh God, it's so fucking good. And like Great movie. all the trippy visuals and like those those edits between and that like Portland view, yeah, I could watch that. I mean, like, I could watch that over and over again. Yeah, it's uh, Gus the clothes are great. Yeah, you know. Gus Van Sant is a, a visionary man. <laughs> He's <laughs> you got to be in the right mind frame to watch his movies, but yeah, yeah. incredible you know, stuff. And, there's, there's a, I, I tell you what, one of the best indie films I've seen recently, um, an f- English film called Bait, like Bait. about a fishing village in Cornwall. It's all shot on like Super 8, um, wow. black and white. It is, I think, the best British film I've seen, it, you know, for as long as I can remember. It is exceptional. Well, I'm going to write that down. I got to check that out. It's really good. Yeah. You know. um, favorite curse word? <laughs> nonce but it's not i wouldn't technically class nonce as a curse word but me and our friendship i don't know whether it's a northern thing or a generational thing but it's it's a british term it's it's technically a british term for a pedophile but okay you can use it 
li we're in, I'm in a friendship group that use it liberally. Let's say, let's, let's use that. And we were down south and uh, we were playing after a show or something like that. And me and the bass player called someone a nonce or something. And like a few southerners that were with us were like shocked. You know, we're just like, that's a horrible thing to say about someone. And we're like, man, we just throw it out all the time. Right. Nonce, <laughs> not nonce. I never heard it. I never heard it. That's a good one. Right. Right. It, it, like British slang is brilliant for, for like curse words. Because you can kind of do anything. You can, if yeah. you say it with the right inflection, you can really, really use anything. Right. <laughs> I always love the C word. You know, that's uh, very, that I always wondered, because like when I watch like a Guy Ritchie movie, yeah, it's as common as like, damn, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so is it really like? No one is bat an eyelid. Like, yeah, yeah, right, right. Here, people like pass out if yeah. you say it. It's not quite Australia, but like a well-timed cunt <laughs> is, um, is, is definitely allowed to be used. You know? It's got such a good power to it. <laughs> it's funny. You know, I, hate, I hate that it's wasted here on like prudeness, you know? It's so great. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, <laughs> you got to know your crowd. Yeah. Um, favorite American guitarist? Nick Zinner. Oh, the AAS. Yeah, Dude. He's the. I love the so, AAS, man. Wow. That, <laughs> Nick is so fucking good. Like, yeah. he's so good. He's, he's the best modern guitar player. And I don't just mean modern as in current. I mean, like, he doesn't play like old rock guitar, like, does modern guitar playing. It's fucking cool. Yeah. And, I... like, He's a dude that, being young, I was like, what is that guy doing? Right, right. Yeah. He's in a, very innovative, I think. Yeah, man. Um, I, he, he's like an like a indie Tom Morello, you know, from Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> yeah. He's, Nick, he has his own Nick, sound. He's so fucking good. And I'll tell you yeah. who else is my favorite guitar player, favorite American guitar player. I mean, you know, we've got like Mike Campbell and stuff, you know, like mm. any kind of Tom Pettiness. But... Um, Ricky Wilson from B-52s. Okay, wow. Original, yeah. Original guitar player, B-52s, you know, and I'm, they're kind of my favorite band. Um, really? Wow. Of all time, yeah. And yeah. His, his guitar playing, people just don't think of it that much, but like in amongst all that crazy stuff that's going on, you lock into his like rhythm playing. It's fucking great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, favorite English guitarist? <laughs> Graham Coxon. Okay. I'm not sure who that is. Guitar player in Blur. Oh, wow. Yes. I love Blur. I just didn't know the yeah. name. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Because he's trying to do an impression of like Stephen Maltmus and Fugazi and stuff. <laughs> Graham Coxon. He's, yeah. Yeah. Or, I mean, fuck. <sighs> yeah. I'm going to go with <laughs> I know Graham there's Coxon. so many. There's so many. Yeah. I'm going to go with Graham <laughs> yeah, I love the Park Life album, man. That's still on like my rotation. Um, Killer. Blur. Album. That's yeah. my favorite one. That that one. Just like opening with Beetlebum. That's a fucking. Yeah. That kind of is up there for best opening track on an album. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know? agree with that, man, for sure. That's such a yeah. good. Yeah. Um. So, let's say you're granted one wish, right? You have one hour to talk to one person, dead or alive. Who is it, and why? <laughs> One hour to talk to one person. Yeah. Muhammad Ali, man. Wow. Awesome answer. Fucking like. Yeah. Because one, you get a lot of talking out of that one hour. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, obviously, we want, we want like, we want Malcolm X, Nation of Islam, Muhammad Ali. Yeah. You know? And obviously, like, when he was still fucking, like, sharp, that's, that's what, yeah, man. that's who you want. He was, he was power, he was, he was a powerhouse, man, in so many ways. Get you, you know, that, that's, that dude will, like, <laughs> if you had an hour to talk to that era, Muhammad Ali, mm -hmm. you'd be coming out of there with your shit together. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't agree more, man. That's a great answer. So, on a scale from one to hell fucking yeah, 
how stoked were you to be here today? <laughs> I mean, straight hell fucking yeah. Hell fucking yeah. Thank you, man. Dude, thank you so much for being here. Seriously. Absolutely. I really pleasure. appreciate it. And um, no, I would actually love to do it again. Maybe we can yeah. uh, catch just, up down the road when you're getting on tour or something. We can do a little. Yeah, man. Just give us a shout. It's, you know, even when the album's, co- like when the album's out, you know, yeah. it'll be out end of the year. Like. Okay. Um, when the album's out, you know, just we can we can come on. I'm happy to do it again. It's like no stress, you know. That'd be great, man. Absolutely. Um, once again, yes. Thank you so much, and uh, stay safe out there, man. Thanks. Thanks. You know, put the mask on. Let's get this shit over with. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. We want to see musicians again. You know. Yeah. <laughs> right yeah, now, I one. right now I'll just I watch them from my garage. You know. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I know. Thanks, dude. Peace Have a good love, day man. anyway. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Catch you in a bit. Go back here.